comments up. Okay, good. And perfect. All right, now I'm going to get this set up. I'm going to show you all a couple of things on my laptop today. Whoop. There we go. Let's mute that. All right, so today, folks, we're going to be talking about, if you're here, real quick, if you're here, if anybody's joining us, I would love to say hi. Uh, 720p, why is that messing up on me? Hmm. There we go. All right. So let's make sure that you guys can see this. Yeah, there we go. Okay, good. All right. So today we're going to be talking about. Um, we're going to be talking about live streaming modes. And when I say modes, I talk about the method with which we actually do the live streaming. Um, it's, a, it's a technical thing. Hang on just a second here. i tell you what. Okay. All right, so I want to know, guys, we're going to be talking about live streaming again today. Um, we're going to be talking about the different modes that we're doing uh, for live streaming and how we can use those different modes at different times to achieve different results. And uh, I'm curious if you are, uh, question of the day, I guess, if you're uh, in our chat room, uh, whether you're on um, YouTube or whether you're on Facebook, if you are currently live streaming at your church, in one way or another, whether it's running around with a, a phone or whether it's live streaming your services or whatever, if you are using live streaming in your ministry currently at your church um, or in a ministry, so if you're a mission organization, if you're, um, you know, any any other kind of, you know, say faith-based um, uh, ministry, uh, how are you using live stream, right? So take, ask yourself that question. If you are using live stream, I want to get a big yes in the, uh, uh, in the, uh, in the comments. So give me a yes and I'll get an idea of who's using live stream uh, versus who's not. And I am working on, I'm trying to open up one of my, uh, my presentation here so I can show you a couple of slides, a couple of examples when we get to it. I've also got some equipment here and we're going to do a little bit of play in. Let's see. Welcome to everyone in our chat room. What do we got going on here? I'm going to be starting in just a minute. I need to share this. By the way, if you are watching live, please share this uh, to your stream or to your um, to, to a page or something that um, that uh, you have an audience that you'd like to share this with. Please do.
All right, I've just shared that to my timeline. So be sure to share, and let's get some comments going. So I'd like to know if you guys, question of the day, if you guys are uh, live streaming at your church or in your ministry or your faith-based organization, give me a big yes in the comments. I would love to know how many of the viewers are currently live streaming. And when I say currently, I don't mean like right this second because obviously I'm live streaming. But if you're using live streaming in your ministry one way or the other, I would love to get a big yes from you in the comments. Let me know. I'm going to be monitoring the comments as we go through. I'm going to stop, and uh, if you guys have questions, I would love to answer those questions uh, in real time as we're going. Or when I say real time, uh, there's actually like about a, oh, I don't know, a 30-second um, lag, it seems, uh, between my stream and, and what's going on Facebook. I wonder how long that lag is. I'm going to, let's see. We'll see if we can get a uh, get an idea there. <laughs> still waiting. Still waiting. There we go. All right, it's right there. So about 30-second lag. So if you say something in the, uh, in the comments and I don't respond right away, it's simply because it hasn't gotten to me yet. Okie dokie, guys. Oh, you know what? Hang on a sec. Do something real quick. I made a, a couple of overlays I want to put in and see if I can get those working because they are going to be helpful. Hello, Jordan. I see you in the YouTube chat. Can you jump over to the Facebook chat real quick and uh, leave a quick message or something so I can make sure that the, the comments are scrolling appropriately? I would really appreciate it, sir. I'm just loading up a a couple of um, let's see here. I'm loading up a couple of overlays that I want to put in that I'm going to talk about, and I want to see how they look. I made them this morning. Let's see here. By the way, if you guys haven't noticed, if you go to the Church Training Academy uh, Facebook page where, you know, ideally you're watching this, um, take a look at the banner that's running across the top. That is a banner that I made. It's a video banner. Facebook is rolling that out across several uh, different uh, pages. Uh, it's, in a, it's in a slow rollout. It's not just a boom and everybody can do it. Uh, for example, I've got several pages that I uh, either own or am an administrator of, and they some have it and some don't. For you know, my uh, my entertainment show, the Entertainment Geeks. Uh, if you go to entertainment or excuse me, theentertainmentgeeks.com, it takes you to that uh, that web page or that Facebook page. Uh, that one doesn't have the ability to have a video as the cover. However, Church Training Academy does. Uh, my church's does. Tate Springs uh, Baptist Church does have the ability to do. It. We haven't loaded that up yet, and that's something I'm gonna gonna work on. Um, and you know, that it's uh, it, it's really cool. Uh, it allows you to, instead of having just a cover uh, that's just a photo with, you know, some nice descriptions or something on it, um, it allows you to actually have some video. And I think you can have between 30 and like 90 seconds worth of video playing on there. Um, and you can have audio if you want or if you, if you don't. If you go to the Church Training Academy page, in fact, let me see, I should be able to bring that up. Let's see here. I'll show you. Just 
Excuse me, folks. Sorry about that. And let's see. Let's cut over to it. There you go. So that's the cover photo, uh, but it, you can see it's cover video. That's pretty cool, right? And it's I'm my goal is to make sure that that, that accurately portrays what Church Training Academy is about, that you can take a look at that and get an idea of what we're talking about. In this case, we've got a pastor, and we're going to have several different camera angles. And then we'll go to... Um, we'll go to like another church with a much more uh, polished type of a setup. And then we'll go to another media uh, media booth, which in this case is the media booth at our church. Not this one, but the next one. There you go. That's the media booth at our church. And then it goes back to someone at a camera. So, you know, that's the, that's the way that you, can, uh, that you can use it. You can use these, um, these cover videos now to tell uh, whatever the message is. In my case, it's a visual representation of what Church Training Academy is about. And in your case, at your church, it could be uh, it could be a photo montage. You could have like some a mixture of still photographs that are animated, um, you know, like nicely zooming in, you know, that kind of thing, or video footage with or without sound. I would say do it without sound unless you're going to physically have a message. But that's a whole nother uh, a whole nother thing to do. I would actually use a pinned post to do that to welcome people to that page. But on the cover, what you could do is you could have. Um, you could have a little bit of footage of, say, your worship service. Um, you could have, like, somebody um, shooting some video with a really nice camera from the stage, maybe over the shoulder of your worship pastor, and then also showing some of the people in the crowd with their hands raised and stuff, you know, and then maybe show uh, some footage of your pastor preaching, and then show footage of the youth playing one of the games in the, in the youth building or at camp doing, you know, I don't know, water balloon fights or whatever, um, basically showing off the culture of your church uh, so that people can get an idea of what the, um, what the atmosphere is like, you know? And uh, it, it's, it, it's almost like a, a 30 to 90 second uh, window into the life of your church. And then, you know, in my case, I've got, I've got my, my tagline up there as well, Church Training Academy, the skills you need to maximize your ministry. So right there, I'm saying the skills you need to maximize your ministry, that's what this page is about. That's what this organization, Church Training Academy, is about. And then examples of those skills being put to use. Does that make sense? So you guys could do it there. If you have a heart for missions and if your church is, uh, the mission statement is, um, you know, uh, raising and equipping saints uh, to fulfill the Great Commission, then you can show things like that. You can show uh, some video footage of your church uh, serving in a uh, in a uh, in, in a food kitchen, uh, or doing Meals on Wheels, or the food pantry, or a children's ministry, or um, you know, if you're, I mean, there's a church here that a few of my friends um, are part of this team. They are um, they minister to people inside the church and then other people as well but they, they set this up as like an internal ministry for their church where they do auto repair so these are guys that are mechanics and they may they may work in um, in that field they may have their own garages or their own shops or or work at a parts store or, or whatever but they're experts in this and they can do basic maintenance and in some cases really advanced stuff and so what they've done is they put together a little ministry and when the phone call goes out that there's a person in the church that um you know, has needs to have a, a the brakes done, or needs to have their oil changed, or something like that, and really can't get out. Especially folks, uh, older folks. These guys run and do that. So you could show some video footage of that. You could show some video of, um, you know, one of the guys uh, changing a flat tire uh, in the driveway uh, of an elderly person. You know, something like that that gives the the message of your church, gives the culture of your church out there. So that's kind of your tip for today is that you need to go and check out your Facebook page at your church and see if you are able to do that. And you will know, let me bring it back up, you will know you're able to do it um, if you go hover over your, um, your page. Let's see. Oop. I'm going to go back. Give me two seconds here. I'm going to go back to my page. And if you hover... There it is. All right, let me show you. 
okay, if you are on your page, in my case, mine is in the business manager because this is set up as a business page. Um, but if you hover right over here, you can hit the hit where it says change cover, and then you can choose from photos, choose from videos. If you see where it says like upload photo or video, then it's available for you to do, and you can do it. Uh, I'm going to put together a little tutorial that will show you guys how to do that and show you the size requirements and things like that and give you some ideas. And uh, hopefully that will be of use to you. So it's something they're rolling out over time. So you may not be able to do it this week and you may be able to next week. Uh, has anybody uh, that's uh, listening or watching, has, you, have, has your church made use of this new feature yet in Facebook? If so, give me a yes in the comments, that is. I'm going to bring the comments back up. There we go. And let's see here. Hello, Chris, and hello, Jordan. Okay, guys, I am. Uh, Facebook comments are uh, janky when it comes to doing live streams and stuff. Sometimes they they show up on you know nicely. Sometimes it's like pulling teeth to get them to show up. I need uh, Chris and Jordan each to give me a yes in the comments please so i can see if it's auto okay i am here dave perfect i just saw that one update so that should be good chris give me a yes or a or a good morning or kiss my foot or something like that if you can yes perfect okay so it is updating wonderful okay so let's get started i want to talk to you guys about uh whoops hang on let me make sure this is going to come up you can't tell this has been a very busy week for me I have been working on a whole bunch of different things including launching a new show not through church training Academy and when I say a new show it's a it's an old show I'm also a movie buff um, I love television and movies and um, if I'm not creating content if I'm not you know out doing something with my family or with my friends um, if I'm not working then I love to sit down and watch a movie I love to go to the movies um, I love to be told the story, so I'm I'm the guy that uh, I can go watch it on a gigantic screen, like when Ben Hur came out um, last year. Uh, went and saw Ben Hur, loved it, sat there, watched it on the big screen. I'm trying to remember if I did it in I think yeah I did do it in 3D, um, and uh, and it was awesome. It was it was really cool. But I could watch Ben Hur on my phone on an airplane. So I mean I just love to be told a story. So that's my hobby. And uh, several years ago, back in 2014, 2015, uh, I started a show with a buddy called Matt Mungle. His name is Matt Mungle. Uh, and we had a show on a different network that was called The Entertainment Geeks. And uh, we did that. We, we watched movies. Well, I mean, we didn't watch it on the show, but we would talk about movies. And the idea of that show was kind of like um, like a roundtable almost. Um, so if you watch like a political roundtable or, you know, like, I don't know, like The Five on – um, on Fox News or you know something similar where you've got several different people talking about a certain topic or a range of topics uh, or like on Sports Center or any kind of, uh, of, of a, of a uh, sports uh, roundtable talk show, that kind of thing. That's what we were doing. We wanted to not have two guys with a clip running behind them and saying, I thought it was a good movie and here's all the particulars about this movie and then you move on to the next. And it's something really dry, Siskel and Ebert style. Um, we wanted uh, a lot of interaction. We wanted to argue with each other. We want to uh, rant on certain subjects. We want to disagree. We want to agree, all that sort of stuff. So we put that together. It's called the Entertainment Geeks. And we ran, I don't know, about six months or so, um, and then um, took some time off, came back last year and started it up on the radio and uh, have been going consistently I, for our, about a year now. And... Then I took a few months off, and now we have sort of relaunched, rebranded, back as Entertainment Geeks. Um, it is exclusive to Facebook, so if you just go to theentertainmentgeeks.com, uh, it will take you to that page, and you can see another uh, aspect of my life and what I like to do. We had our first Facebook show yesterday uh, doing that, and we're doing it exclusively to Facebook. So the reviews will be posted on Facebook, both written and uh, video, as well as the weekly live show. Um, we're not putting on YouTube, we're not doing anything else, any videos that you see pertaining to that on our website or anything like that, all that's going to be uh, Facebook Embed. So it's exclusive to Facebook. Anyway, close parentheses on that. Um, I had to get all that started, so that's why it has been a very busy week. Let me see if this is going to work. If it is, 
then I will... Wrong one. Okay. All right, so I want to talk to you guys about the different... I'm going to bring up my... There we go. I want to talk to you guys about the four modes of live streaming. So there are... There's basically, when you look at equipment, when you look at styles, when you look at ways to go about live streaming... Um, there's several different ways to do it. There are there, ugh, there is, there is um, what I like to call selfie mode. And let's see here. And selfie mode is basically when you take your camera, when you take your, um, when you take your phone, your camera, and, and, it, and it can be a, a couple of different things. If you've got like a, a GoPro and can stream from there, then you can obviously do it with that. But if you've got your phone, which I do, if you've got your phone and you just go to Facebook and you um, type in, you know, your page and you hit go live and you start streaming and you're running around just talking to it like this or if you are, um, you know, catching an event or doing something, you know, holding it up and just, just shooting and just whatever's, Whatever's happening, you're catching it and you're sharing it with the people. Um, that is what I call selfie streaming or selfie mode. And you can you can use it for a couple of different things. You can use it for like personal vlogging. So if you are a uh, pastor um, and you are just walking from one part of the church to the other and have a few thoughts that you want to share just kind of on the fly, boom, you can do that. Um, and you can be... Um, yeah, you can just live stream right there and, and get your thoughts out. I've got a friend... I mentioned him last week, Cliff Ravenscraft. Um, he is um, one of the things that he has started doing is what he calls life streaming. So he will have a um, few minutes uh, in. The, you know what he's doing is when his wife is getting ready, and he's already ready, like say to go to lunch or to go to dinner or something. He goes out on the front porch and sits down, pulls out his phone, holds it up, and talks to it for ten minutes. And just whatever random thoughts are going, you know, how'd the day go? Just whatever. He's just sort of sharing it. And one of the things that it does for me as a fan of his content and his uh, his show and his website and such, um, and as a friend, I've, I've met him several times and we've gotten to know each other a little uh, through email and stuff like that, it brings me closer to him and it, and it builds that relationship. So this guy is in uh, northern Kentucky um, and... I don't get to see him, but maybe once a year, and I get to email with him every now and then. He's extremely busy, so I can't just carry on these really long conversations and stuff with him because he doesn't have time for it. But I feel like I know him because he sits down and just shares with me and with you and with everybody else that's watching, shares what's going on in his life, what his thoughts are, um, how he's dealing with a certain situation. I mean, yesterday, he, he's, he's 44 years old, like me. I think I'm 44. I'm either 43 or I'm 44. Anyway, um, we're the same age. And he shared the story of him being adopted yesterday. What? So he was adopted yesterday, 44 years old. How'd that happen? Well, he shared it. He shared the story. He told me in there. And what it does, having that kind of insight into somebody um, that you are interested in, uh, builds that know, like, and trust that we talked about last week, uh, and we'll talk about it a lot. As, as church organizations, there's a lot of negative about us as far as the world is concerned, and I guess as far as we're, we're concerned, you, you and I know that the church has problems as, as a whole, as a, excuse me, as a, as a group of people, as a body, um, we're just a bunch of flawed people. Uh, some of us think we're perfect, and we try to make ourselves appear to be perfect and stuff, and we're not. Um, some pastors get full of themselves. Some ministers and church members get full of themselves, and it causes problems. Um, some are fantastically humble, and no one knows it, <laughs> you know, just because they're, they're unassuming and they're humble, and they're just preaching the word or um, leading Bible studies or quietly serving or whatever. But there's, there's a lot of 
of animosity in some sectors of our culture towards church. And people will not always just get up and run to the church and go sit down on a Sunday morning. They may think it's fake. They may not believe in God. They may think it's a whole bunch of bunk. If we can use something like selfie mode and streaming like that just randomly as as ministers, as people that are looking to change lives and affect people's lives, we can build a relationship with it, with them uh, kind of in a... Um, we, we can build a little bit of intimacy with them without ever having shaken their hands. Now, we don't know them. We don't know necessarily who's watching us, but they will get to know us. And the more they get to know us, to like us, and to feel that they can trust us, the more they'll be willing to have a conversation with us or to listen to what we have to say when we start sharing the gospel with them. They may start going to the church's website and watching the live stream of the service. They may join in an online prayer group or an online Bible study group. Um, or they may, if they're local, they may show up. And that's exactly what we want. Is we want to affect people's lives. And we can do that by building a relationship with them. I know it sounds weird. Building a relationship with them by turning on our phone and sharing some thoughts. We can do that. You can also do this, uh, use selfie mode, when you are at events at your church. If there is a, uh, I mean, heck, if there's a baptism, a lot of churches are doing this, where the parents will either live stream to the, to the page or, you know, I'd like to say the children's minister or the youth minister or somebody will actually live stream to the uh, church's page for a baptism. So instead of the camera in the back of the auditorium zooming up on the thing, they'll, someone will be standing in the baptistry on the steps holding the phone down, you know, and videoing, you know, this nine-year-old getting baptized right there as if you're, I mean, the people that are watching it, are like standing in the baptistry with them. It's really cool. It's neat. So I encourage you to do that. That's that's one thing that you can do right now to start bringing a element of of genuineness of of um, of compelling content randomly because it's not necessarily scheduled uh, into the online culture uh, and into the hearts of the people that are interested in your church. Um, another and let me show you something. You can, if, if you take a look um, in this picture here, I've got um, this DJI Osmo. This is a little, it's kind of like a, it's like a wand. And uh, think of it kind of like a selfie stick, but it's not, it doesn't extend like a selfie stick does. It's just a wand that you can hold in your hand, has a gimbal on it, and you can mount your phone on it. And if you take a look, I'm walking around NAB with a, with a buddy of mine, and I'm just following him around. You see how smooth that is? That is literally nothing more than his iPhone, uh, and it's sitting in this gimbal, and I'm holding it and walking with it. Now, right there, using something like that, let's see, I'll make it big for you. Yep, there we go. Sorry. Um, right there, you can adjust the quality uh, and increase the quality of your selfie stream. So you can use this pointed at yourself or walking around at an event at your church, um, walking around the church if you're just going around checking out what's going on uh, with, with another department or if you're walking around during say, the youth uh, worship time or the, you know, the youth volleyball game or whatever like that. You can stream that and get a much better quality uh, stream by simply investing in something like that. It's, it's really cool. There, there's a whole bunch of different uh, companies that are making these. Some of them are like really generic. Some of them are like really ex expensive. Um, but I'm seeing them in the two, three, four hundred dollar range. They, they do go up and they get much more advanced and, you know, like use GPS to make sure that everything, I mean, they can really get advanced. Um, that one, I want to say it's like in the three to four hundred dollar range. I've actually got not that one, but one from another company um, that did a Kickstarter last year. Um, that is, it's called the Smove, S-M-O-V, S-M-O-V-E. Anyway, um, I, I contributed to their Kickstarter program, so I'll be getting mine here hopefully in the next month or so, and I'll show it to you. We'll do a review, and I'll, and I'll show you everything about how it works. It's, it's really cool. Um, I want to talk to you now about doing more with selfie mode, okay? There is, um, there's the, like I said, there's the instantaneousness, instantaneity instantaneous 
instant insanity instantaneousness the spontaneity that's the word i'm looking for the spontaneity of reaching in your pocket grabbing your phone and going live right then and there uh and that's great and remember last uh last i think it was last week when i was talking about how there's like two different types there's like the produced um formal live events you know we've got a lot of equipment and all that sort of stuff and then you've got the uh the quick hits the the in the moment the life streaming not live but life as in what's going on in my life right now or what's going on in our church or whatever happened. Um, and uh, it, the production quality doesn't have to be great, okay? So you can walk around. It can be a little shaky. It can be a little uh, a little janky and, you know, fumbling with getting the camera to reverse to shoot you and then, you know, fumbling to get it back and all that sort of It doesn't have to be perfect because it's genuine and it's real. Now, if you want to, you can actually take selfie mode um, up to what I'm calling indie mode. And indie mode is basically using your camera more as a um more like a more like a proper a proper um camera uh using your phone more like a proper camera uh you're going to treat it basically as if it were a real camera and you're going to do things like uh put it in a housing to uh give you more stability so if you take a look at that housing uh this right there uh, that one's mounted on a tripod, uh, you, or you can hold it in both hands. You can mount uh, other things. In fact, I'm going to show you that. I, I actually forgot to, forgot to uh, get it, so bear with me here for just one second, guys. There we go. Okay, uh, I had to go grab my wife's phone. My wife is an iPhone user. I am a uh, Android user. So, I'm, but I want to show you um, how how we can do this. And I, let's see. I I guess. All right. I've got a couple things. All right. I want to show you this. There we go. Okay. Um, I've got. Got an iographer right here. Let me see if you can see this. Okay, um, if I, yeah, see, it's going to get blurry if I hold it up too close. Um, this is an iographer, and this is an iographer that is made for the iPhone 5 phones. And what you can do with this is you can take your iPhone. And you can clip it into the device. We go. It's gonna be kind of hard to see, but yeah, there you go. Yeah, you can see it clips into the device, and it gets very. I mean, it's it's snug. It's not going anywhere. And you can use two hands to hold it. When you have a wider surface area to hold on to, you can uh, get a much more steady shot. It's, it's the difference between you know, between doing this, you know, and trying to hold it nice and steady and not hit the buttons and all of a sudden you know turn the volume up or whatever. Um, and holding it like this and, you know, bracing your, your arms against your body and getting some more uh, stability to it. Another thing that's really cool about it is you can put on these lenses. So there's like these, I want to say they're 37 millimeter lenses that you can screw on. And now you can have a telephoto lens. So you can get a better optical uh, image quality. Uh, like this one is a two times telephoto lens. There's also a, a macro lens, a wide angle lens. So you can actually get a better, uh, a better visual image and a steadier visual image. They also have I can't find it. It must be in my other bag. Um, they also have uh, these shoe mounts. These are cold shoe mounts. Let's see. There you go. Uh, cold shoe mounts. What they are is um, the, there are these little slots where you can slide in, say, um, a light. So if you have a, a little LED light, you can slide it in, mount it on here, and now you've got some good lighting for your shot. You can also put, say, a microphone on, like, a external, like an external mic or like a shotgun mic. You know, I've got a clip that this shotgun mic will sit into. And so now I can go around and event with my iographer with a light if I want to interview people or if I want to shoot uh, you know, a certain area. 
um, and I've got a microphone that is on here that goes into the goes into your phone. And you're going to get better audio than you will just the little microphone that's built into your phone. Now, the same thing works for, um, uh, and that's the iographer. Same thing works for the Android phones. The uh, iographer actually makes a, um, a version that has a universal mount. So you can actually, it's got like a, the little screw on the bottom. Like, like, see, this one has a little screw on the bottom as well. So you can mount this onto a monopod or a tripod or, you know, um, a shoulder rig. I mean, if you've got like a shoulder piece, you could mount it on there and be walking around, you know, like you, you would have a big video camera, but it's your, it's your phone. Um, and with the one that they make for Android that's more universal, because it actually has a, a little mount on it, you can then... You could then use a universal phone mount like the ones that come on your little selfie stick, your little $5 selfie sticks, um, or a, a nicer, more sturdy one um, like the ones from Square Jellyfish that, you know, in this case, this one, I can swivel and uh, mount it different ways. If I want to mount it, if I want to mount the phone vertically, I can do that screws in. Or if I want to mount the phone horizontally, you know, I can adjust. I can adjust the angle. I can have it at some odd angle if I want. Um, these are maybe sixteen, twenty dollars for the ones from Square Jellyfish. Go to Walmart and pick up, you know, your five dollar selfie stick and just unscrew the clip on there, uh, and then you have uh, some more flexibility. Now, if you don't want to buy one of the ones from Iographer, you can just get like an L bracket. This is an L bracket that I ordered from Amazon. Uh, it, it's metal. It's nice. It's got a quarter 20 screw mount at the bottom so that I can put it on a tripod or a monopod and then it's got a screw here so that I can mount my selfie clip right on here and then put my phone in I told you I had that that mount for my shotgun mic I can clip my shotgun mic in here and then on the side here I've got another shoe mount that I can put a phone the idea behind this is in in indie mode is that you are stabilizing your phone you're treating it more like a proper camera. You're giving it a, um, uh, a better lens in some case, a telephoto lens. Um, there are mounts that, that you can, you know, you can put different types of, of lenses on. Um, it's a way to spend a little bit of money, not hundreds of dollars, unless you want to, um, but not have to buy a full phone, not have to spend, say, you know, a, a full phone. Not have to spend, say, like $1,200 on a video camera or not have to, um, you know, say buy a, a DSLR camera or $600 or whatever. You've got your phone with you, and uh, it, a lot of people have a lot of storage on their phones now. So, you know, you can get a 64 gig or 128 gig iPhone. That's a lot, you know. I mean, the cameras that I run around and shoot, um, you know, video projects and stuff with, I'm only using like 32 gig, you know, and I'm shooting full HD and all this stuff. Um, but yet, and if you have a, a more recent phone, an Android or a iPhone, you may not know this, but you can shoot 4K video on there. So here you have in your pocket a 4K camera, and all you need to do is maybe get a telephoto lens to clip onto it and get a little holder to hold it on and get a tripod and, you know, you can use lighting. You can use, you know, I mean, I've got professional lighting in here. You could just use external lighting, put up a couple of light stands, or you can use one on there that you're running around with uh, and get a much better image quality. And again, you can use that if you're running around doing selfie mode uh, and just shooting people at random, or if you're doing something more formal, like shooting your church announcements or something like that, or if you want to live stream the, uh, the, the kids, you know, fun day or field day or something like that. You can do that. Anyway, that is indie mode, and it is it is really cool. Um, if you're going to, we're going to move now into the more formal live event type um, selfie, uh, selfie mode, live event type production. Um, and this is what I did at my church. Um, oops, got to go back. There we go. This is what I did at my church. Um, I call it desktop mode. And basically what you're doing is you are you're using the tools that you have, like a computer, like a laptop or an iMac or you know a, a desktop computer or something, and you're extending the capability. You're going to run some software on there that will allow you to take multiple cameras 
and put them in a um, in 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 some software that will allow you to change those camera angles. Okay, so just taking a look right here, um, I've got my laptop sitting. So I'll go back to the full screen. There you go. I've got my laptop sitting there. When I, when I came in, our church was uh, doing very basic streaming with one camera, a really high definition camera, going into a Mac. Uh, it wasn't a Mac Mini. It was an iMac, an old iMac. Um, and, you know, like through the FireWire port. And basically it was taking this really nice high-definition image, cramming it down into standard-definition VHS-looking picture quality and literally just sending that one signal right out. Remember when we were talking about, let's see, we were talking about the BoxCaster and how with the BoxCaster you can, um, you can do like a full broadcast you know, you could have like, like I've got a TriCaster, so you could do like a full TriCaster with, with multiple cameras and a whole bunch of, you know, microphones and just, I mean, just this whole thing. And that whole signal goes into this little box and goes up to the internet. Or you could just take the camera and run it right into the HDMI and then go straight out to the internet. So you can do something like that with this BoxCaster. We were doing that with like VHS and it was, it was horrible quality. So what I did was I went in there with my laptop and um, I brought, uh, I had, a, had a, we had the good video camera there at the church. So I just brought a cable and a little adapter and got it connected up. And I got this software that's for free that's called OBS or, or Open Broadcaster Software. Um, it is actually, believe it or not, I'm running it over on a machine over here. And that is how you are getting my production on Facebook. Uh, since I am dual streaming here, I'm going to both um, to YouTube and I'm going to um, uh, Facebook Live, my TriCaster goes to YouTube and then I send the signal out to another computer, desktop mode, right? Live streaming, desktop mode, and it is uh, broadcasting over to uh, Facebook Live. Uh, there's a question in the YouTube chat real quick. So, by the way, this is a good time to see if you guys have any questions. Uh, let me get out of my prezo here for just a second and we will see. Hello, Petra. Um, let's see, uh, over on YouTube, let me see what we got here. Okay, so Caving in Colorado over on YouTube wants to know, do any of them um, allow to connect to a microphone? So I'm, I'm assuming that you're talking about um, using the, um, uh, when we were talking about indie mode, right? Um, so using these, Using the iographer, basically whatever your phone can do, if your phone has a uh, microphone input or like, you know, like a dual input uh, you, for your, your headphones and your microphone, like with an adapter, you can. You can connect a microphone up to it. Um, you can connect a, you know, Rode makes a lapel mic that's about $100, and it plugs in. It's like meant to work like with your phone. So you can plug it right in to the to the slot it automatically you know the little lines line up appropriately and you have a nice high quality microphone or you can use a splitter that basically takes there you go so here's this splitter we're talking uh, back to uh, indie mode here for a minute guys uh, and what it does is your 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 phone has a trrs connector i know this is really hard to see on here but basically, you've got the, the, the connector on here. You've got the tip. Then you've got a little black mark and a silver ring and a black mark and a silver ring and, a, and, and then a black mark and the final silver ring. When you see, like, those three black marks on there, that tells you that this is meant for a pair of stereo headphones and a microphone. That's why, like, on our iPhones and our, our Android phones, so if we can take those, like, those Android earbuds, or excuse me, those iPhone earbuds, that have like the little mic right here and that they have the earbuds, all that's going through the same cable because it has this type of connector. This type of connector is not what is used typically in audio production. So microphones don't have that. They will either have a mono or a stereo type connector. So you have to have a splitter and what it does is it gives you a jack for your headphones and a jack for your microphone. Depending on your phone, you may be able to, or excuse me, depending on the recording software, and the phone, the guts have to be able to do it, and the software has to be able to do it. You may be able to monitor while you're talking. So, um, on my cameras, like the camera I'm talking to you on, or my uh, DSLR, or uh, any of the other cameras that I use out in the field, when I, you know, it's got a microphone jack and it's got a 
uh, headphone jack. So I can put the headphones on, I can connect a microphone, and then I can hear what's being said, okay? On our phones, some, the guts are more advanced, some, they're not advanced, some software will take advantage, and some will not, okay? You may be able to have the microphone connected into one, have your earphones connected to the other, and while you're recording, hear through the microphone what is being said. In some cases, the only thing you can do is hear the playback. So you'll need to play with your software on your phone and see. Um, also, if you're using iPhones, you can use, um, like if you have one of the newer iPhones, like the 7 that doesn't have a jack, you can get like the lightning uh, adapter that has the headphone adapter. Um, and some of them, I believe, will let you, you know, like microphone in and then um, uh, headphone out. So you can use that. Uh, there's also like Bluetooth microphones that you can use. If we're doing production, uh, I don't recommend using stuff like that uh, because, again, you're looking at a, a Bluetooth wireless signal and you can only go so far uh, with those. Anyway, I hope that answers your question. I see you have another one. Let me check. Okay, so do any of the gimbals allow you to, to uh, connect a microphone? Your gimbal can be part of another rig. So an example. Like the DJI, um, I could take that DJI and I could connect it onto here and hold the hold the 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 unit right here and have a different um, you know have a, a couple of slots here for putting on a uh, an accessory or whatever that I need. So, but I mean, not necessarily connecting into the gimbal, but the gimbal connecting to some uh, some other device. Uh, and you'll just have to look. You'll have to see. Um, I know DJI has some accessories and stuff. They are kind of expensive. They're really proud of their product, and they should be because it's a really good product. But just take a look at that. Spice it. Okay. So, um, Caving in Colorado also says, our church has an iographer for a tablet. Uh, yes, iographer does make um, a whole range, um, and I'll put a link in the show notes to um, like to uh, an Amazon page that has like all the different iographers and stuff. And I know the guy that created uh, the iographer. It's really cool. The guy was a, um, I'm not sure if he's still doing it or not. He's got such a successful company. Um, the guy was a, um, uh, an AV teacher in high school and they had a small budget, you know, so they could, they could like buy like two cameras and, you know, two lights and three microphones. I mean, th it was a very small budget for them to teach, for him to teach like all these kids um, audio and video production and how to work a camera and stuff. If, you know, you got 30 kids in a room and you got two cameras. I mean, how much can that kid learn beyond theory, right? So he realized that they all have a whole bunch of cell phones and, um, you know, tablets and, uh, you know, iPod touches and stuff like that. And all that stuff has cameras on it. So he got his 3D printer and came up with a mount. And, and I remember playing with one of the 3D printed ones. Uh, we were um, one of the first to get our hands on it and, uh, and, and review it. And I remember the first time I played with an iographer was his 3D printed one from his house. And um, he printed up several of these things and made them for different sizes for like, you know, an iPad mini or a full size iPad or uh, an, you know, an iPhone 4 or an iPhone 5 or whatever and uh, handed them out to the class and then spent the money on like, the resin he needed to print these things and then like LED lights that you know like $20 LED lights that he could clip on there and you know $50 camera microphones that he could put on there and that is how he taught camera work and and composure and all that sort of stuff it's a really cool story anyway close parentheses on that um ingenious um but yes uh, he says um caving in Colorado says that uh, they use an iographer for a tablet as an um, and additional use that we use to spice up events is a photo booth and then email the photo. And then we use that in emails to distribute newsletters. Yeah, it's brilliant. Using the, um, the iographer, um, if you think about it, it allows you to, for next to nothing, because, I mean, they're like, they're like 60 or $70. I mean, they're not expensive at all. Um, but it allows you to deploy a lot more cameras in the field, a lot more, um, a lot more camera people for very little money. Even if you, 
if you have a media team and say your media team is is 10 people you know and everybody kind of shares positions i mean there's there's like the one main sound guy who's just like the genius on the soundboard but he's trained a couple of people so he may be out while someone else is doing it and there's there's the one guy that's like the head video guy you know but he's trained other people right so you got like 10 people that are volunteers that are shooting different things uh, instead of buying you know several higher end cameras and then they have to check out the camera and they have to check out the you know this and check out a lens and you know be sure and, and then if there's an accident and you know they got a 13 year old volunteer and he drops it and messes up a twelve hundred dollar lens and you see what I'm saying but if you spend you know a few hundred excuse me if you um, if you have a I'm sorry, this is a family emergency. Bear with me just one second. Sorry about that. Okay. I'm going to pick this up for the recording. Sorry, guys. Live production. Okay, so if you have... Um, I'm looking for the pickup point. Hang on just one second, guys. <laughs> what you could do, basically, is take your, your budget um, that you would be putting into, say, a really nice camera or something, and buy, you know, find out what everybody has. Find out that, you know, we've got, like, four iPhones, um, and we've got uh, three Android devices, and we've, we've got a couple of iPad minis, and buy some of these iographer rigs, um, buy a couple of uh, microphones, buy some, you know, some lenses to screw on them and stuff. And then you just say, okay, here's yours, here's yours, and here's yours. And then they go out. And then you keep a couple in the booth that are ready to be, you know, have something clipped into them. But now you've got people that you can deploy around the church um, throughout the week, and you don't have to worry about it. You've got a couple hundred dollars invested instead of a couple of thousand dollars invested. But they can go around. You've got somebody in the youth that can just go around, and if it, you know, if it breaks, it breaks. I mean, they're going to break their phone, so who's going to allow their phone to get broke? You see what I'm saying? They've got some ownership in it. This is my equipment, and they can get some great quality stuff. So I highly recommend not only doing indie mode or doing selfie mode, but also having a couple of rigs put together that you guys can use for indie mode. And, I mean, you can use it for all kinds of different stuff, for relatively inexpensive as well. Now, let's go back to talking about desktop mode. Like I said, we're using desktop mode here. I'm actually using a hybrid. Um, I'm using desktop mode um, at our church um, and and have, have since graduated from using desktop mode. But basically, for nothing, I have the equipment already. So we had a really nice camera. I spent $12 on an HDMI cable. I already had an adapter. Let me show you this adapter. Um, my, my laptop has a Thunderbolt. So I bought this little adapter for about $125. It's from Blackmagic. It's called the Ultra Studio Mini Recorder. And... It's really neat. It's got a Thunderbolt port on the back side, and it's got two inputs. It's got an HDMI port. Let me see if I can get the light just right. There you go. An HDMI port and an SDI port, okay? And it, um, it allows me to take uh, anything with an HDMI input can go into here and come out the Thunderbolt port into my machine as a camera, okay? So when I say comes in as a camera. As far as the computer knows, it could be looking through a lens or it could be looking at another computer screen. It doesn't matter. It is a camera input, okay? It can be treated like a webcam, so my Skype can use it, okay? So um, in, my, uh, in my office, I've got a $3,500, you know, DSLR sitting there with a really nice lens on it, and the, the video uh, HDMI goes out of that into here and into my laptop, and I can live stream um, from there, or I can get on a Skype call or a Zoom call or something with this impeccable image quality, you know, but it's basically a glorified webcam. Um, this allows you to have really high quality video going into your computer as a video source. And then you can supplement it with, you know, if you have, if you have a couple of, let's see. Yeah, 
if you have a couple of, of Thunderbolt ports, then you can get a couple of these things. And I know a guy that does a, um, a live stream show where he's got two cameras and two of these adapters, and they're all going into his MacBook, and he's doing two cameras shooting, and it's it, absolutely great. So you could do that. You could also, uh, if you, you know, like Chris Ochinski uh, in the uh, chat room over on Facebook, uh, they have uh, a device very similar to this, but it's from a different company. It's called Magwell. And instead of using Thunderbolt, it uses USB 3. So it can, you know, if you've got USB 3 port um, on, uh, on your machines, then there you go. You get a really, really great uh, image quality. Um, in our case, my, I have an older 17 inch um, iMac, or excuse me, MacBook Pro. And so it only has the one Thunderbolt port. So I supplemented with just a webcam. So I use this webcam. This is a Logitech. I set it up in the back in the balcony. I set it on a tripod and um, ran it into the machine and basically got a wide angle view down of the audience and the stage and just kind of an overview shot of our auditorium. So when we would do the get up and greet your neighbor time or when people were coming in and you just hear the music and stuff like that, I may have that shot just as an establishing overview of here we are. It also gives you another uh, another shot to ditch to. So when uh, when you're using like the good camera, in our case, we were using the the, the high def camera to pace um, the pastor as he's you know pacing back and forth on the stage. We'd have like a medium shot of him, um, and that can get that can get monotonous and tedious. Um, you want that shot because you know it, it's a it's a good clear shot and all that. But every now and then, um, I would jump back to that wide shot. You know, especially if he would, I mean, they're just just a little trick. Uh, if he would say something about, um, if, if he would be talking and he would say, now for us as a church, we need to be sure, you know, so we starting to talk to, you know, us as the church at large, visually, I would just go to that webcam shot, um, showing the church, showing the people, you know, a bunch of people in the pews and stuff, uh, and then go back to a close-up on him. And what that did was broke up the visual monotony. Now, when you're using indie mode, um, you can live stream your entire service through that, okay? So you've got an iographer holding an iPad mini or holding a, uh, an iPhone or an Android phone or whatever with a little telephoto lens on there so you can get just a little bit closer. And you've got, say, the sound coming from your soundboard through the headphones output uh, or through the control room output, and it's going into your phone. So you're getting good, clean audio, and you got it sitting on a tripod. You can live stream. And we've got people um, in the Church Training Academy family that are doing that. That's where they started doing their live stream, and that is fantastic. They are getting much better quality um, doing that than they would be if they were just holding the phone um, or having nothing, right? So you can do that. Then you step up to the next level, which is desktop mode, which allows you to have... Um, you know, a more proper camera and have multiple camera angles. And you can do things like bring in a Bible app or um, uh, words from your, uh, for your songs or slides or anything like that. You can do that sort of stuff with desktop mode. Then the next mode is broadcast mode. And that is, that is, a, um, that is a more polished television-like experience, okay? So when you're doing broadcast mode, you are going to be using more higher end, uh, not necessarily higher end cameras, but maybe higher end um, software. There we go. Higher end, um, higher. You can use higher end cameras, but maybe higher end uh, production equipment. You're going to have a computer that is dedicated to doing this now. You can buy your own computer and install software like vMix or Wirecast or uh, some of these other um, live video switching software. You can put those on there and then put in some video cards in your box and um, you know have two, three, four, five cameras. I mean, uh, Blackmagic makes some great video capture cards, and so you can have a card for each camera that you need. And then you know you can have all that and build your own rig and get a broadcast quality signal that. It's going to be streamed. It's going to be recorded at a very high quality, and it's going to be great. Or you can buy a pre-done box. Some of these companies have, you know, I say vMix. They have these, these, they call them reference systems, and what they are is a box that they put together that is tuned and tweaked and ready for being, uh, being used with their software, kind of purpose-built, um, nothing, uh, you know, no deviating from anything. They're not putting weird software. They're not installing games or doing anything. like that. They're not even putting Pro, pro Presenter, nothing like that. It's just a straight box tuned for using this hardware with their software. And you get great quality like that. Or you can do what I do and have a TriCaster. 
So I've got a box that is a purpose-built box at our church. It is the TriCaster Mini 4 HD, and it's a box about the size of, uh, well, it actually, it's about the size of my iPad as far as the physical dimensions uh, go, you know, the, li- the, the length and width, um, you know, and the, the depth is, you know, a shoebox, you know, smaller than a shoebox, actually. Um, a couple of cracker boxes. Um, very small, has four inputs for uh, HDMI inputs. So any camera that has an HDMI output can go into that box, one, two, three, four, and or anything, like I said, because it's HDMI. So in my case, I've got um, a couple of cameras going into it, one and two, and then I've got the iMac that is running ProPresenter. It is going in as camera three. So we now have one, two, three cameras, right? A wide shot um, camera up in the balcony. Um, we've got the camera that is manned and that follows the pastor across the stage as he's walking and zooms in and zooms out and such. And then we've got the iMac that is sending in the pro presenter notes and slides, uh, videos that are played during the service, things like that. Um, and the quality uh, that is recorded is impeccable and the quality that is streamed is impeccable. You can do lower thirds when you're doing broadcast mode you can do high-end graphics you can do 3d animation you can do all kinds of really great things now it's whether you're building a rig um, or whether you buy a rig that's already pre-done and optimized and tuned for doing doing all this you know in in the case of of the, the tricasters new tech builds all their own components so they sat down and said, what do we need for a video card? And they start putting the components together and testing them and soldering them and coming up with a special board and they write the software specifically to work with all that and it's, it's a finely tuned environment and you know the, the failure rate is so low it's ridiculous. I've built boxes myself and if you've ever uh, built a, a computer and installed software and installed you know, hardware, certain hardware may not work with other hardware and you've had to troubleshoot and it's, you know, it can be a pain in the butt. So um, there's pros and cons. Sometimes it can be a little cheaper to, uh, to build your own box, uh, and sometimes it can be um, <laughs> a little cheaper and a lot more headaches or a little bit more money, and it just works. So whatever, <laughs> pick your poison, whatever, whatever you like. Anyway, uh, I hope that gives you an idea of the range of, of live streaming that's available to you. What I find is that in most cases... What I'm, what I'm finding is that in most cases, we are uh, going to use, and, and, and in optimal cases, we're going to use several of these um, at any given time. Um, you're going to, you're going to have, let's see. Uh, I was just checking a comment. Sorry about that. Um, we find... Um, that a mixture of these modes for the given circumstance. Generally, you are going to, when you're streaming your live service, you're going to want to use either desktop mode or broadcast mode. A lot of that is dependent on budget um, and the skill of the people. So um, if you want to easily deploy something, it makes sense to spend, say, $6,000 on a TriCaster. And go in there, set it up, plug in the cameras, sit down with somebody and... You know, I mean, I can teach you, you know, in an hour or two um, how to engineer a whole show using a TriCaster. Okay, that's great. Easy to learn. It, you know, it's the same thing every time. You know, no work, worry, fuss, or bother. Once you learn how to do it, you learn how to do it. Or you can do broadcast mode where you're going to bring in a laptop, you know, your laptop or another computer, uh, desktop mode, and uh, you're going to cobble something together and get it to work. The person that cobbles it together is going to be able to use it the best. The person that uses it the most is going to be able to do it. In the case uh, that at our church, they didn't have the computing power to handle it. They hadn't bought any updated computers or anything. There was nothing in the booth that could really handle what I wanted to do, so I brought mine. So in this case, um, if it was going to work, I had to be there. Okay, I wasn't going to leave my laptop with somebody else. You know, I wasn't even going to leave my laptop sitting up there and then go sit down with my family while someone else did it. Why? Because it's my laptop. I've got all my stuff on here. I can't, can't risk that happening. So whatever, you're going to do one of those, I would say, for, um, for getting a jump up in the quality and the production level of your live stream for your live events, your formal events, for the service, for the musicals, things like that, right? 
but then use indie mode and selfie mode day to day, running around the the office Wednesday nights. Um, you know, our church has Wednesday night meals. Perfect time for someone with a camera, um, you know, shooting indie mode or shooting selfie mode, just getting people's reactions, talking, you know, funny stories, just whatever, things like that. Anyway, I hope this has been a help to you. Um, if it has, give me a big yes. Um, let's see, I've got Neil F. Fisher uh, in the Facebook chat. It says he appreciates the knowledge. He's using a TriCaster for events. I have the Mini uh, 4. I do too. I love that. Love, 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 love. You guys are going to hear me talking about TriCasters a whole lot when we discuss live streaming because, um, frankly, some of the best equipment out there. Um, it also helps that uh, they're a Texas company, so come on. Like I said, I said in a, in a video um, that we're going to do this show at 11 o'clock uh, Texas time, and if you're not in Texas, I, I don't know why you wouldn't be in Texas. Um, get here as soon as you can, right? Um, anyway, but they are a Texas company. They're based in San Antonio. And what's neat about New Tech is they're a – they're a big company, but they're a small company. Um, I know, I know the new tech guys. And uh, when you go around, um, it's it's cubicles and offices, um, and it's a small, dedicated uh, team that um, man just tries to create the absolute best products they possibly can. So I'm always going to talk. I've got a heart for for new tech products. I've also been using them since 1991. So um, you know, if it ain't broke, don't try to fix it. Right? Isn't that what they say? Um, all right, guys, I hope this has been a help to y'all. Um, if you guys are looking to uh, start doing some live streaming um, and you know, make uh, live streaming a part of your church uh, on a regular basis or a part of your ministry and, and introduce um, a live element to what you're doing, and remember, when you have a live element of what you're doing, you also then have a recording to repurpose later for for whatever and I think next week that's what we're going to be talking about is what to do after the live um, sort of a strategy on how to maximize your your live streaming so we're going to be talking about that next week um, but in the meantime if you're wanting to live stream if you want to see how live streaming can work and what you can do with it if you're just curious about it if you go to easychurchstreaming.com you can get a, a free guide that I've put together. It's called Live Streaming for Churches the Easy Way. And um, it goes over the four modes, um, and it actually gives you some examples of the equipment that you can use and some links. Um, most of the links, by the way, that I'm going to give you um, over time, if I, if I talk about software or hardware uh, products or things like that, um, the reason that I'm mentioning those is because I've either used them and I love them, or I have them and I use them, um, or I have colleagues that are close to me that are kind of inner circle kind of people that are using them in one way or the other. I'm not wealthy, so I can't just go out and buy every single thing that's out there. Um, but I do um, I do use things. I do try them. I do test them. And if there's something that I want to add to my arsenal of tools, then over time they will be. If there's something that I have been using for years, I definitely want you to know. But a lot of the links that I'm going to share with you guys uh, today and in the future uh, may be affiliate links, which means that um, I've got a small relationship with the company that is providing that. And if you use the link that I use uh, or that I that I provide you, um, then I'm going to get a small commission on that purchase if you guys do it. So, for example, hardware, most of the hardware that I put out there is going to go through Amazon. I have an Amazon um, affiliate account. So, if I'm talking about a certain camera, I'm going to give you a link to buy it there. You don't have to buy it there. But if you want to support the show and if you want to support Church Training Academy, every little bit helps. So if you use the links that I provide, I would greatly appreciate it. So easychurchstreaming.com, that's that's my link. So it goes you know directly to uh, where my guide is. Uh, but the links that I have in there, those are mostly Amazon links. Uh, and I think the software ones go straight there, like, you know, OBS, that's free software, so it's just a link that goes to the OBS software. Anyway, um, so go check that out. Uh, it's a free guide, and it can help you get started and give you some ideas on things that you can do right now. A lot of stuff I've talked about right now, but um, it also gives you a, a, a good guide on some of the equipment that you can get uh, to get started. Anyway, I hope you have enjoyed this. I hope it's been helpful, and be sure to uh, share the show with your friends. Um, I'm looking to get this audience growing. I'm looking to get more and more and more involved with you guys and helping you guys um, in all aspects of church media and using technology and exploiting the technology and the tools to help change people's lives, and 
that's something that we can all do here together. So remember, every Wednesday at, is it Wednesday? No. That's the other show. That's Entertainment Geeks. Uh, 11 o'clock on Wednesdays for Entertainment Geeks. Um, Church Training Academy, 11 uh, a.m. Uh, Central Day, I, CDT, Central Daylight Time, I guess. That's where we're at. I don't know, all this time zone. Texas time. So 11 Thursdays, Texas time, and we'll be doing CTA Live. So thank you guys for watching, and have an absolutely fantastic and blessed week.